All right, it's time to clean the sluice. So now that we've processed, well, I've processed seven buckets of material, which is around 350 pounds of gravel. I'm, and all the heavy stuff is now in the sluice. So instead of panning 500, 600 times, I'm gonna pan once. And in that one pan will be all the gold from all those previous buckets. So in order to get the gold out of the sluice, I'm gonna take it out of the river. This is how we clean out the sluice. So first, we need to detach the riffles from the sluice. We do that by these little flaps on either side. Like so. See all that sand in there? I gotta wash it down into the bucket. And I'll use my pan, just because it can hold water, not because it's a pan. I'll scoop up water. Kind of do that. And I'll repeat the process until all the sand is down to the bucket. Now that the riffles are free of most of the sand, I can pull them out. We'll look at it closely later. I can also pull the expanded metal out. No sand left on it. And here's the carpet. The carpet goes into the bucket and I wash the rest of the sand down the flue. Check the carpet for gold. Well, oh, nothing there. And the last process is washing out the sand from the carpet. So now all the sand from the sluice is now in the bucket. So in, in one sense, I've condensed seven buckets of material into one bucket. Now don't worry. I'm not going to dump all the sand into the river. I just need to get rid of the extra water. Show you how much sand is left. So see that? That's what's left. That was what was in the sluice. So now I put that in the pan, and then I'll show you how the old timers used to pan. All right, now I'm down to one pan, all the material from the bucket, from the sluice is in the pan. So now this is how you and the old timers, 49ers, and the Georgia Gold Rush people used to pan for gold. Now the pan isn't too special, it's just a regular dollar gold pan, plastic, so it's light. And it has these little things called cheetah ripples, which prevent some of the finer stuff from escaping. So you have all your material in your pan. First thing you do, you want to kind of knead it with your fingers to break up any roots and chunks and clay balls that are in there. This makes sure that all your gold is free and not attached to something lighter that might float away. Next thing you do, you kind of rile it up inside the pan. Make sure you're still in the water. This is very important. And you just kind of rile it up like that. And when it settles, notice how all the light sand is on top. Now, this motion I'm going to make will get rid of most of the light sand. And every once in a while you want to rile it up again, get everything settled. Notice how the sand's getting darker? The dark sand, known as black sand among miners, is made up of a lot of things. Tungsten, garnet, peridot, 
other gemstones, some gold, but mostly iron. Most of the iron came from those rust streaks I was talking about earlier. So you'll notice that some of the sand isn't really sand, it's mostly rocks. So you want to get those rocks out. Don't spend too much time on it. Just make sure that you get rocks that are big when it's easy to get them. And then you shake it around again. And just continue. Like that. Now, if you ever see gold at this point, which you shouldn't, but if you do, you want to try to hide it under the sand pile. Because you're trying to get it to settle the very bottom crescent under the sand around there. You want it to stay there, otherwise you'll lose it during the panning process. It's very gentle and slow. And notice how the pan, it's in the water. I don't never take it out of the water. A lot of people like to pan it out of the water. It's a lot harder to do it that way. And I don't think it's also as efficient as doing it inside the water. The water kind of allows you to meter out your swishes and swirls so they're not too powerful. Excuse me, I'm going to switch hands right here. Continuing the pan. See that little white thing came up? That's just the rock, don't get excited. Then you ask Kevin, when will I find the gold? Well, if you did done anything right, you shouldn't find it until the very end if you're trying to, to just isolate the gold from the black sand. However, if you want to see what you got, there's a faster way to find out if you have anything. I like to call it the crescent wave pattern because you kind of make the water in the pan make a crescent around the pan. And the way that you do this is you first you want to settle everything into the crescent of your pan. Here, hold on, let me just get rid of some of this stuff up here. Everything into the crescent. And you want to kind of go like that. Very slowly, not to disturb the top pile all that much, just like that. And after any large chunks, you'll immediately see them. Looks like there's not too many big things here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down and pan it uh, to the end. Well guys, uh, I found two little tiny ones that wouldn't show up on camera. So I'll end this expedition by showing you more about the sluice box. So let's put it back together. So this is the trough. Let me put the carpet on top of the trough. I'll slide it all the way to the bottom. Make sure it's flush up here. You'll notice there's some wire spots and that's just because this is an old sluice. And the riffles have kind of line up with the riffle spots. See? I've been blocking them from the sunlight. And these are the riffles themselves. See how they're angled back? That allows the material to build up on the downstream side. And there's a little space for it. Um, and also creates turbulence for the, the heavier stuff to drop out. So before we put this on, we got to put the expanded metal. And the reason why I use this, is I don't know if it'll pick it up. Might be too blurry. But I'll tell you, um, all the expanded metal tends to lean this way. So think of it as a whole bunch of little tiny ripples. And this guy goes, I can get it. On right, like that. And you squish it with the riffles, which line up with these locks. Well, 
lock go up. Here's it in place. And that's how you put together your gold gem sluice. Of course, this model is kind of outdated. I don't think they've made this for a very long time. But, um, I found nuggets with this before, but not for a while. And obviously, this canyon isn't the richest place, and I didn't find anything that big. But, uh, I'll show you some stuff later that I did find that are very big.